to talk to Jody Mateo, Deputy Editor of Automotive Magazine, and James Bell, Head of Consumer Affairs for General Motors. Uh, we're going to talk about some letters and some numbers and uh, money and things like that. How are you guys? How are you, Joe? Hey, I'm great. Hi, James. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you. So we're talking about uh, some uh, letters here, BSM, FCW, and technology and safety. So, Joe, can you explain a little bit about what, what, what is this about? What this is about is we did an article at AutomobileMag.com about um, the 10 cheapest cars with a suite of safety features that we think are important today. Um, and the four features are uh, blind spot detection, lane departure warning, uh, forward collision alert, and a rear view camera. And uh, we feel these are important technologies that a lot of people aren't aware of today. And, uh, and so we wanted to, to compile a list of the cheapest ways to get these technologies in a new car today. So yeah, and some of these technologies are used to be only like very high-end uh, luxury cars, and now they're coming down the pipe and like very accessible. No? So what, kind of, what are some of the cars that, are, uh, that have these kind of technologies nowadays, and how much are they? Well, the, the least expensive one that we found, we have here in our studio with us today, and it's a Buick Verano, which starts at uh, just under $26,000. And that's quite a good price for a car with all this technology. Um, the 10 cars we have kind of averaged about $30,000, which is right in the sweet spot of where people buy new cars today, because I believe the average transaction price is about $31,000. So this technology has become very accessible. You're right. It all, always starts in expensive cars. The trickle down has come, and now it's available in cars that real people can buy. Yeah. And James, uh, in General Motors, I think they, they've been implementing all these uh, technologies in, in various ways because I think even the Spark has, uh, which is uh, the one of the, of the less expensive cars and smaller vehicles mm -hmm. that uh, GM has, they have amazing technology also that can be adapted through the app, apps in the phone, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's been a big focus for General Motors to try to, uh, you know, democratize this technology into as many different vehicles at as many different price points as possible. A great example of that is the... Uh, the Buick Encore, which actually, I'll tell you a little story. I just um, purchased one of these for my wife, and uh, she went for a little drive in it and came back and said, there's this little light flashing in the mirror. What, what's going on here? And I was uh, very happy to explain to her that that's blind spot monitoring. That's actually sensors in the back of the vehicle that are watching the space that uh, maybe is not easy to pick up in the mirror, or even if you crane your neck around, you're not going to see quite well. And so I told her that's, that's uh, it might seem a little irritating at first, but when you know what it is, it's something that you're really very, very happy to see and uh, pay close attention to. Another yeah. important one, I think, is uh, lane departure warning systems, which, of course, is, is not a new technology per se, but I think it's important that it's available on, as Joe points out, very affordable cars today, many of which are, happen to be from General Motors. So, uh, and, of course, lane departure is uh, watching the road, kind of keeping an eye on the, on the lane markers, and if you start to drift out or uh, if the car senses that you're not paying as much attention as you should, it will give you a little uh, a beep in the car or the light will pop on. Certain vehicles will even uh, make the seat vibrate a little bit to, to remind you to pay attention to the road. And forward collision alert, is, as Joe also mentioned, I think is something that's really going to save a lot of lives and a lot of damage to cars. Of course, there's sensors in the vehicle that are watching the road ahead. If it uh, picks up the fact that you're continuing to apply the throttle, and not noticing the cars ahead of you are slowing down, it will pre-tension the brakes, pre-tension the uh, uh, safety belt, and uh, give you some warnings to let you know the traffic up ahead is coming to a, to a slow. Yeah, and, and in some points, I mean, these the, uh, fantastic technologies are getting us to a point, like pretty far ahead maybe, I don't know, uh, to get to autonomous driving or semi-autonomous driving, right? Absolutely. I mean, when you take a lot of these functions that are, you know, people are very comfortable with and know that they work very well in so many cars today, and you start to merge them and get them to kind of speak to one another, that's going to be our first step towards autonomous driving. It, it, you know, autonomous driving initially is not going to necessarily mean jump in the car, push a button and say, take me to grandma's house. It's going to be using these systems that we see work so well today in a, in a unified way to uh, really, uh, you know, bring a lot of safety to our drive. Yeah. And Joe, uh, as, as James was, was pointing out, like his wife didn't identify the technology in the car immediately. And some of these things are pretty advanced for, some, for most of the people. I mean, you and, and I like drive cars all the time, and we are like almost seeing everything almost immediately or before it hits the market. But for some people, this takes some time to learn and adapt and like to get comfortable with, right? Absolutely. And that's one reason we wanted to bring it to the attention of, of consumers 
because uh, you know a lot of consumers aren't even aware of what anti-lock brakes and stability control are. Yeah, and those came out like years and years right, ago. Right, right. And luckily now stability control is standard on all cars as of 2012, which is a great thing because it's a very important yeah. uh, safety ad advance. So we wanted to help bring, it, bring these technologies to the attention of consumers and let them know that they're available uh, today on uh, affordable cars. And that was the point of our exercise. And uh, you can read about all 10 cars at automobilemag.com slash news. The story is still up on our website. Um, and one surprise that we found was that seven of the 10 are American cars. So that was a, a clearly the American car companies are on the leading edge of making these technologies available uh, affordably to more people. Yeah, actually, I, I, I remember reading and, uh, and talking to, to some people, actually from J.D. Powers and, uh, and, uh, and, and Associates, about how American uh, manufacturers are like ahead of in, in the game, and like including technology. But what about trying to convince the people of like, in some cases, I don't know, in the cars that you review, these are optional uh, features that obviously cost a little bit more. So how how do you? What's the point to com convince people to get? really these cars that are more safe and maybe a, maybe a little bit more expensive but really in the long term are safer cars? Well I would say that uh, if you have forward collision alert and it uh, helps you avoid a collision not only is it saving your life but um, it will save you uh, an insurance deductible and higher insurance costs not, let alone the hassle of a repair. Um, yeah, I think the, the uh, first time that light goes on and warns you it's worth everything. You realize penny. how how important it is. Yeah. Um, you know, cars are very safe today, but uh, w with these additional technologies, it makes them safer. Um, I think people are willing to pay for safety, but the point of our article at automobilemag.com is that these uh, safety features are now accessible. Um, as I said, these 10 cars are all about $30,000, which is where a lot of people are buying cars anyway. Yeah. And James, uh, finally, uh, th there's also other kind of technologies coming into the General Motors uh, lineup, right? Like connectivity and like mm -hmm. some other things, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, connectivity is such an important part of, of uh, vehicle purchasing now. And that happened really quickly. And as we start to see, uh, you know, the younger generations coming in, that's something that they're just expecting. But, of course, the flip side of that is it has to be connectivity that's safe, that doesn't interfere with the drive. And uh, that, as you point out earlier in our, in our conversation here today, it's, uh, you know, from the Spark, the least expensive vehicle, all the way through the most expensive Cadillac and everything in between. So, yeah, that's, that's a big part of what we're doing. That and fuel efficiency, uh, those are really the two markers right now that people want to be wise, maybe got burned when the fuel prices went up last time, uh, just looking to do something smart. I mean, in my own personal household, we had an Enclave, which w was fine on fuel, but we've now uh, shifted to the Encore, and we're looking for an even better fuel efficiency with still having plenty of safety and style. Yeah. So, Joe, finally, so we're going to have to, uh, do you include a cheat list in your article about BSM and uh, F FCW? We know GPS and USB now, but there's like so many acronyms now that uh, people have to Yeah, learn, right? and the acronyms are very confusing. We explain in our article what these four core things mean, the, the lane departure warning, the forward collision alert, the blind spot detection, and rear view camera, which doesn't have an acronym. But those are the things that we think are... Um, on the leading edge of, of, of safety technologies that people will want to look for today. Excellent. And I think the review camera is going to be mandatory pretty soon, right? I think the government is pushing for that. For which one? I'm sorry? The rear view camera? Yes, I believe that is. I'm not sure when, but that is coming. And, you know, in, I'll say on behalf of the manufacturers, they invent stuff, it's useful, and then the feds come in and mandate it. So um, that's what happened with stability control. Uh, yeah. starting in 2012. Excellent. Jody Mateo, Deputy Editor for Automotive Magazine, and James Bell, Head of Consumer Affairs of General Motors. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time and uh, great information. Uh, it's very, very helpful for our audience. Thanks a lot, Javier. Thank, Thank you very you. much. See you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Esos fueron Jody Mateo de AutomotiveMagazine.com y James Bell de General Motors hablándonos de cómo estas nuevas tecnologías que en realidad ayudan a evitar accidentes y eventualmente salvar vidas también ahora están disponibles en autos que empiezan alrededor de los 30 mil dólares. Así que no hay excusa, no hay que tenerle miedo cuando el eh, quizá el vendedor de autos nos uh, ofrece estas opciones. Pero antes de llegar a ese punto es mucho más recomendable ir a las páginas de internet de General Motors o de cualquier otro tipo de fabricantes para empezar a configurar el auto y ir aprendiendo un poco antes y así no nos sorprenden cuando llegamos. 
Esto es Auto 060, yo soy Javier Mota y ya regresamos aquí en Cristina Radio Network. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.